just being able to to talk to somebody who knows what I'm going through or has been there. And a lot of times you know, when it's your situation, it's really hard to, to see the forest from the trees and it's not clear. But just having someone as a sounding board sometimes will give you a lot more clarity a lot more quickly. So it's it's led me to find my sense of purpose, solutions to problems, and overall more gratitude, I think. I think I'm, I was surprised by how many people have said, oh, how can I help? So hi, and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined by Monica Seikos, who is the president of the Asset Preservation Strategies Company. And Monica has been referred to me by my good friend, Scott Rusnak, who you've heard me talk about before on this podcast, because she's actually been working with Scott now um, through EOS for around about three years. And we just had a quick chat um, before we come on the show. So welcome to the show, first of all, Monica. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking to you today because we had a quick chat just beforehand to find out a bit of your story. And you've got an amazing story in terms of not only building a very successful business, um, but also in terms of having to deal with some health issues on the way and how you've actually dealt with that. So I would love you to start by sharing a bit of your story because when you started in the business, you were an assistant or doing the paperwork and the admin, and now you're the president. So tell us a little bit about that story and and what you've been able to do in that time. Sure. So I started in the financial services industry about 12 years ago, and I was hired on just to fill out client paperwork, help with servicing requests and maintenance. And I have always been an investor since gosh, probably my teens, late teens, and uh, personally, and so I already had a lot of questions for the advisors about, well, why are we choosing this investment over another investment, and can we do it better, can we do it differently, and so they, in about five years time frame, I went from assistant to advisor to overseeing operations as president of the firm. So I've been in pretty much every position at our firm and I'm very familiar with the roles, the specifics of each of the positions and what's needed for to be successful. And yeah, so it took about you know, maybe less than seven years for me to be a partner in the firm. So I guess they loved me enough to want to make me a partner. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's a very, very short time frame, which is fantastic. And so how many, overall, how many staff do you have? Um, I know you do some outsourcing. You've got some people who actually work in the business. How many staff do you have overall? So overall, counting everyone who's outsourced, we're about 10. Excellent. Okay. And I always ask my guests this because I always think it's quite fascinating. What are you personally and professionally most proud of in your life so far? So personally, I'm proud of being married for almost 10 years now to my best friend. And we also recently completed a home remodel and customizing the home exactly the way we wanted it. Oh, that's fantastic. And then professionally, I would just say I'm proud of the professional journey that I've had on the way to being an owner of the firm and then also of the success that the firm has had and the difference we've really made in our clients' lives. Hmm. That's great. And so you started working through EOS with Scott, say, about three years ago. Can you share with us a little bit of that journey? Like, what was life like before that? And then how has life changed since you've brought EOS into the practice? So prior to EOS, we had a lot of projects. We had a list of maybe call it 20 projects a year we wanted to work on and get done and As you know, when there's that many, very little get done, and there's not really a prioritization done to really, well, what's going to have the most impact for the business that year? Um, That gets lost when there's competing many projects. Mm -hmm. 
And so we also underwent increasing our efficiency and streamlining workflows and processes and also going to more of a hybrid remote work environment as well. So some roles got outsourced, some processes that didn't produce much value got streamlined, got redone. And so that was a a big change in our firm that not only increased our efficiency, but also helped with the bottom line on our profit and loss because we were able to leverage technology, outsource, and really make it a lot more efficient and profitable. Okay, that's great. And so this was, how did you recognize, you know, the things that need to be worked on? Um, how did I, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, now how did you recognize that the things that needed to be worked on? I mean, it's great to have systems and processes and, and efficiencies, but where did you start in terms of going, hey, this is where we're perhaps losing efficiency or, or how, I mean, because focus is really, really important. I guess I wanted to understand how you got to that focus. Yeah, so the first thing that we started looking at was technology was coming out. That was when we first started our industry was a little slower to implement things like DocuSign and signing electronically. But when that first came out, that was one of, we were doing a lot of things by paper. And paper works when you're all in the office. Paper doesn't work when you have remote or um, distributed teams. And so that was what, where we first started is, okay, if we, if we move from paper and we start streamlining to electronically, how much time does that save us? What efficiencies do we gain? And then we actually looked at every single process that we had. And then we looked at how do we make this more efficient? How do we add more value? So it took probably the course of a year to really dig deep and look at all of these processes and find where we had opportunities for improvement or refinement. That's that's really great. And so um, the the working remotely, did that was that forced or was that a choice that you made as a company? So it started in 2020 when the world shut down. We had, we had everything set up to where for us, fortunately, it was pretty seamless that we could just take our equipment home and we were up and running. Mm-hmm. But what changed is it's, it's, it's a different to manage a team that's in the office and it's very different to manage a distributed team. So how do you keep people engaged? How do you manage the culture? How do you make sure that the work is getting done? And so it's all of those things are different when people are working remotely versus in it, it all together in the office. Mm-hmm. And so some things that worked for us was that we did every second week our team all gets together in the office together and we have lunch and we have the ability to talk to each other get to know each other we also do some events with the team either holiday party or appreciation days where it's an off-site event and the team gets to get together and get to talk on a personal level versus it all being about work. So we find they have the, uh, they build camaraderie that way and it's really worked out well for us. And we've also done Colby's on each of our team members. Oh yes. So we know kind of where, what they, where the strengths are, what, they like to do, not like to do, and the roles are kind of, they're put in those kinds of roles where it's more in line with what their strengths are. 
which is part of the EOS way, isn't it? It's about doing things that you love. And I think that's, that's for those who don't know the Colby Profile, the Colby Profile is a, a profile that helps people to understand their way of working, their natural way of working, and what they enjoy doing and what they don't enjoy doing so that we can um, you know, ensure that they're being used to their best ability. Yeah? Yes. And so that is part of the EOS way. Tell me a little bit about, you know, so what, what fundamental differences has EOS made to your business? So EOS has really helped us to clarify and focus on what our objectives are for both the one year, three, five, ten year, and to drill down on a quarterly basis and say, well, this is wonderful that you want to do all these things this year. Let's pick three, for example, uh, three rocks or three things to focus on for the quarter and actually make an effort to work on those every single week. Mm -hmm. And we found that once we drilled down and picked, so we went from like a, a list of 20 things that we wanted to work on, and once we picked, okay, we're going to do five this year and of that we're going to focus on these two first and these are the the smaller steps that need to happen in the quarter to to get going on that we found that we were able to to execute consistently and actually we found that traction that moved our process and projects forward it's amazing, isn't it? Because you need that laser sharp focus to really make a difference. But often as entrepreneurs, we, we are easily distracted by various different things. And, and as you said, we, we think that oh, we'll do 20, 30 things in a year, which is kind of physically impossible. And if everything is important, nothing is important. So generally, the more things you have, the less you actually get done. <laughs> yes. I think you yeah. tend, you, there's a tendency to overestimate the amount of time that you're going to have to work on something and you underestimate the amount of time it takes to complete it. <laughs> I think you're absolutely spot on there. And I think also uh, we forget that we still have business as usual as well, right? We've still got to actually run the machine um, to keep the clients coming and keep the clients satisfied. Um, I'm really interested because I, you know, you shared with me a little bit of your personal story um, and that, you know, you got to a point where, you were doing what I think probably many of us do at some point where we're working really long hours. We're doing everything in the business, even the things we don't necessarily like, um, but we're doing them because we feel that we have to or because we can't let go. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey in that and what has changed for you. Yeah, so I started out I taking on a lot, I think. I mean, I'm a type A, so i I take on a lot and yep. feel like, you know, sometimes it's hard to say no because it's like, well, can you do this? Can you do this? Well, yes, I can. Give, you know, and then you end up with you've taken on way too much. Mm -hmm. And then it's it's having to prioritize what gets done. And so what it led to for me is longer hours and I was just feeling really burned out. I didn't have energy at the end of the day or even going into the weekends. It was, I sat around, I ate, I watched TV. I didn't really feel like doing anything. I was tired all the time. And that's when I, we started more so having this conversation with Scott about, well, let's do this exercise where you you take everything that you're doing and you're putting it in in four different sections. You know, things you love to do and are great at, things you like to do and are good at, things you what you don't like to do but are good at, and then things you don't like to do and are not good at. Yep. So. I did this exercise and I did it actually several times <laughs> and yep. I was finding that I was spending a lot of my time in the bottom half of that. So things that I don't like to do, but I'm great at or things that I don't like to do and I'm not good at 
just out of necessity, just out of I, I felt like I couldn't choose or didn't have the option to choose what I wanted to do. And part of that just goes back to, I think, you know, how I was raised. It was we didn't get to pick, you know, the, the chores we wanted to do or not wanted. It was everything that had to be done, had to get done. So yes. it didn't matter if you liked it or not, you had to do it. So I kind of had this mindset with me, you know, going into business as well. And so then I started noticing that when I started taking things off of my plate and started delegating the things that I didn't like to do and wasn't good at, that I started to have a little more energy at the end of the day. I wasn't as drained. And then I, I mean, challenge I'm just going to my... ask you a question there because I think that this is probably something that most of us don't realize. We keep doing this stuff because we think it has to be done and nobody else can do it. We, we don't necessarily recognize the negative effect it has on us in terms of, you know, when you're doing that stuff you don't like, it actually makes you feel awful and it does zap your energy, which means that at the end of the day, you are exhausted, you are tired. And it's not actually about the hours you've worked. It's about the work that you have been doing that does not energize you and does not make you, um, you know, give you the, 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 the positive vibes, if you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I found that the days where I got to spend more time on the things that I liked or loved doing and was either good or great at, I wasn't that tired at the end of the day. I came home with more energy. So I started to make this correlation between the things that I love, uh, that I should be doing more of what I love to do and are great at or like and I'm good at versus the things that I'm, I'm good at doing, but I don't really like it. And so it was it wasn't as difficult for me to delegate the things that I didn't like doing and wasn't good at. But yeah, it, that's the easy stuff. <laughs> yeah, but then I was getting stuck in the things that I don't like to do, but I'm great at. Hmm. And I don't know if that's how it is for for most business owners, but I think it's it was harder for me to to give that up because it was already things that came really naturally or easy to me. Mm-hmm. And so I started challenging myself to even start, you know, delegating that little by little. And then as I was doing that, I was starting to see, okay, I'm, I'm ending the day w with a higher energy level. And overall, I'm feeling better about my contribution to the, the firm and the business that day. So I just started to see this, this pattern. And then I started to look at, well, what's, let's look at health wise, what can I be doing better? Because I still had the fatigue, I still, you know, to some extent, I still had, I, I was still taking prescription medications. Um, and I started working with a, a trainer and a nutritionist to really start improving and making time for my health mm -hmm. and starting to prioritize that because I was going down the path of, of insulin resistance to type 2 diabetes and that was very scary to, yes. to be that yeah. close. So um, I found that I had to get rid of some of these things and delegate to make time. Because you can't do it all. You can, I mean, you could try to do it all, but I don't think you can do it all well. I think that's a really, really good point. And I think also um, you've hit on something that I, I've recognized in myself, and I think probably lots of Taipei will be like this. You know, we get the discipline and accountability for the business from EOS, but we need the discipline and accountability in our personal lives as well, which is why having a personal trainer, having a nutritionist, having those people who are going to hold you accountable um, and set you the same kind of things, your rocks, your little mini things you need to do each week, I think can be really important. I know it certainly works for me. 
Yes, and I also learned that we I can't become an expert in fitness and health and nutrition overnight. I could try, but you're not you, in a short amount of time. You can't replace people who have decades of experience, and and that yeah. that's their area of expertise. That's a really, really good point. You know, I hadn't really thought of that, but it's absolutely true. And, and it's also how you can outsource things from your business too, isn't it? Because if you're looking for people who've got that, those decades of years of experience of expertise, they're going to be able to do the task a whole lot better than you will do as somebody who's trying to do everything. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we talk, I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch track completely because when we talked in the beginning, you mentioned the fact that you have actually outsourced some of the, the key functions in your business um, based around a similar kind of philosophy. So you were talking about the fact that you've actually outsourced your marketing person. Could you want to give us a little bit of insight into how you came to that decision and, and what benefits you get from that? Yeah. So we looked at how much time we were spending or allocating to marketing. And we also looked at who on our team was qualified to try to do or to do marketing. And, you know, none of us had marketing degrees or, you know, that wasn't our area of expertise. But we also found that it wasn't a full time 40 hour a week position. Some weeks it wasn't even 20 hours. So we didn't want to bring somebody on board and, and not be able to fill the time when that's their area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So we started looking into outsourcing it and we were able to find a firm that had great experience. And it's really, I could say we've seen a big difference when we look at our return on investment over what this company's been able to do for us versus when we were trying to do it on our own. Mm. That's great. And so um, I'm interested, so from an EOS process point of view, you have somebody who sits in the sales and marketing accountability chart. Does that person still sit internally or is that your outsourced um, That's person? outsourced. So they attend the level 10 meetings and take full control of that accountability? So they, yeah, we have our separate, they're not part of a level 10, like with the team, but they're a separate meeting with all of the partners each month. Okay, that's awesome. And so it, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I know I've certainly got some clients who, who feel like they have to do um, everything and all those main functions in the business. But as you said, it's like, what is your real core competency? I mean, for you guys, it's about strategic asset management. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's not necessarily about marketing. I think we have got to recognize that and saying, hey, look, we're better to get an expert to help us is something that's really, really key and a lot of businesses can, can learn from. Hard Sorry. to do, you know, because yes. it's again, well, you know, you give up control or it's something different than what you've done yeah. before. And it's that whole letting go. And, and we talk about this a lot, right? It's like if you are... If you're an entrepreneur and you're an owner of the business or founder of the business, you know, it's your baby. And it's really, really hard to let go of your baby and let somebody else look after it. But we actually have to if we want to grow and if we want to grow sustainably, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the whole delegate and elevate tool is a, is a really important tool to recognize that, which is what you were talking about. You know, what do you, what do you love and you're great at? What do you like and you're good at? And if we can work almost exclusively in that here in that you know that area um, that's when we add the most value to the business so in the business you have to do that for every single person don't you you've got to work out you know from their Colby test from 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 um, engaging with them talking to them what are their real um, real strengths and real unique abilities and have them working in that zone of genius if you like as much as possible yes and you've done that yourself, which is fantastic. And, of course, that enabled you to, to really get it back into your health and make sure you're looking after yourself, which I, I guess must have had some kind of onflow into the business as well. So how has that changed the business with you being in a, a fitter, healthier, uh, more happy state? Um, it's also improved focus in the business, Yep. Because um, when you're tired and when you're not sleeping well, there it's the there's 
less of a, it's harder to focus on those, those strategic goals that you have. Like I call it deep work, the things that, you know, we're probably going to spend two to four hours just sitting and, and in quiet and working through. Yeah. It's harder to have the focus for that when you don't have the energy and, and aren't sleeping as well and, and have the, the health problems coming into play. Yeah, and that's true because in order to get your rocks and things done, you do need to dedicate good time to work on the business. Um, and also you need to have downtime as well. So, you know, we talk about clarity breaks. Um, is that something you use now in your um, you know, weekly, monthly practice? It's something, yes, that I use now. I didn't use before. And so the difference has been sometimes all it takes is 10, 15 minutes for me to walk away, take a walk, and then I'll come back more clear on what it is exactly that the strategy will, the solution will be or, or how we want to implement the strategy. Mm-hmm. So it allows me to to reset because sometimes you can't see the forest from the trees. You're sitting there and every, everything's, it looks the same. I can't see it. And then you just have to walk away and come back. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, we, when we talk about clarity breaks, I mean, that's just for people who don't know what they mean, but what we mean by that, it's about really taking yourself away from all the distractions, all the noise that's going on in the business, putting yourself somewhere where you can be comfortable being away from all that and sitting there just with your thoughts. And um, I use a remarkable, but it could be just a blank piece of paper and a pen and asking yourself some of those difficult questions to kind of you know, um, see where the answers come to. And a lot of people really struggle with that because it does require you to switch off from everything in the business to get away from it so you know you can do it short short chunks of time like even 15 minutes an hour half an hour can be really helpful sometimes you can do it for longer how do you make the time to do that I block it out on the calendar because I find that if I don't then I either I'm very good at filling up the time or somebody else will do it for me (laughs) So unless I, it's blocked out on the calendar, and then I'm committed to it. So I, I live by my calendar. So if it's on the calendar, I'm going to do it. If it's not on the calendar, then I'm, oh, well, I have an extra block of time here. Well, let me let me go over here and take care of this. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so blocking it out in your calendar. I'm going to share a little secret with you um, and don't tell anybody apart from the listeners, but um, I do sometimes block it out. I still manage to sort of, you know, not necessarily take that time um, because I can find, as you said, I can find other things that will actually kind of take that time. I I did a a really great clarity break in the last couple of days. I actually went away to somewhere where there was no distractions. There was no power. There was no internet. There was no, um, you know, there was just nothing that could distract me. And I have to say, I've come back from that feeling completely refreshed and very much focused on what needs to be done. But I am struggling a wee bit with, you know, really keeping that block of time for doing that. So you got any tips you can share on that? Um, I would just say when you block it out, just commit to it and just make uh, no matter what you know I would I personally treat it like I would if it's a client appointment you know I don't move it it's just as important and I just you know you have to I think force yourself sometimes to do it Mm. you know even if because there's all the noise and the work it's always going to be there I found that out that no matter you know how many hours I work there were still new things coming in and something is still going to be there. Yeah, I think that's a really valid point. I think you've got to place priority on it. And I think also you can use, um, I know I've I've started to ask my assistant to actually make sure that I do take that time out so that you've got somebody else holding you accountable for it as well. We've actually put it in our scorecard just this last week because after having taken the time out, I've kind of gone, actually, this is something that I do believe is really important. It's now on our scorecard each week, which means I'm going to be held accountable um, for having taken some time out in the business. That's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, thank you. Okay, cool. So we've talked about, you know, so you, the, the, the EOS has given you some real clarity, some real focus, that sort of discipline accountability. Um, we've talked about the Delegate and Elevate tool, which has obviously been very important for you on a personal level to get you back to doing that stuff that you love, which then, you know, increases your energy, gives you time to focus on your health, etc. Are there any other tools in the EOS that you have, have been real game changers for you? So the vision traction organizer has been a game changer, not only just for the business, but also on the personal side. So the EOS life book that recently Mm. came out. So I read that and um, have been, you know, Scott gave me some great clarity on, on how to prioritize that as well. Mm. And so we did one actually for our family on the personal side and we've set our own rocks and scorecard metrics and bucket list goals on there because what was happening is as I was spending so much time in the business and working in the business, the family um, life like kind of went by the wayside where we weren't doing much as a family. We weren't getting out and and doing anything that we liked to to do. We were kind of home all the time. And Mm -hmm. it was hard. It was kind of like you're in a rut because you don't really have the energy to do anything. It's easier to stay home. And so we sat down and we actually just went through and said, okay, well, if we think of our lives, well, what's on our bucket list? What do we want to do? And then start picking two, three things from there every year to actually cross off. And so, yeah. yeah. And so that's been a real game changer there because I don't think we've ever sat down and, and did core values for the family or talked about, well, in the next one, three, five, 10 years, what do you want to see? So Mm-hmm. It got my husband and I more aligned and on the same page, which I felt was really, really important. And that's really interesting because, you know, obviously, well, congratulations on the 10 years, but, you know, 10 <laughs> years together, we do start to get into a rut. Just like with business, we start to get into a rut where sort of we're not, we're not getting out, we're not doing the things that we're really passionate about and perhaps haven't even had the conversation about, you know, what is important to us and how do we um, actually create a good family life as well as good business life. And I think that VTO is, is a great tool. So the VTO in the business is a two-page plan that really gets you laser-sharp focus on where the business is headed long-term, medium medium term and short term and then the family version of that is a similar thing it's a two-page plan where you talk about your core values you talk about your bucket list you talk about what you're going to do each year with your goals and then your um, your 90 day rocks as well so um so lovely to hear you you've, you're using it not only in the business but to create a better relationship with the family as well yeah yeah. Okay, cool. So I know we're, um, we've learned such a lot in, in such a short period of time in terms of, you know, how you've improved your, your health, how you've improved your personal life with your, with your family, how you've improved the business and clarity and focus. I always ask the guests to give us three tips because we love people to be able to go away and, and, and do something from what we've discussed today. So would you mind sharing with me your kind of three top tips for the people who are listening in? Sure. So my first one would be to identify what you really want to do and develop a realistic roadmap to get there. So the vision traction organizer is a great way to kind of map that out. And it's also going to hold you accountable. And once you decide what you want to do and plan, then make sure to execute on that. Because it's not enough just to write it down, but then and then put it away on the bookshelf and, and leave it there. It's you know sometimes it's going to feel uncomfortable to to try something different, but I mean someone told me if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So don't be afraid to once you've mapped out the journey that you'd like to just take that that first step. Yep, and, great. and then the second, I would say, is pay close attention to your overall health. I mean, if mm-hmm. there are, you know, like in my case, if I wasn't sleeping, I was anxious, 
then it's probably your body telling you that something isn't right. And I think the sooner that you address it, the less issues there are. I mean, I let it go for years. And so I had a list of, of issues to fix. So the sooner the better on that. I think that's a great, great thing. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think sleep is one of the first things to actually go. When you're starting to feel stressed, you'll start to have disruptive sleep. You're waking up at 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. And I think that, that, that is, they're warning bells. They're like this because without decent sleep, the body actually just can't function properly. So it's, it's, it's the beginning of that downward spiral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then and the last one then. Lastly, I would say don't be afraid to leverage or, or lean on others, you know, whether it's team members, peers, other trusted professionals, family members, because a lot of times that's led to more clarity in my life, just being able to, to talk to somebody who knows what I'm going through or has been there. And a lot of times, you know, when it's your situation, it's really hard to, to see the forest from the trees and it's not clear. But just having someone as a sounding board sometimes will give you a lot more clarity, a lot more quickly. So mm -hmm. it's, it's led me to find my sense of purpose, solutions to problems, and overall, more gratitude, I think. I think I'm, I was surprised by how many people have said, oh, how can I help? So yeah. that was always yeah, fun great. Me. And, and I think, I, I say this a lot, but I actually think that um, we, I mean, I'm sure you, you do as well. We really enjoy helping people, right? And so um, asking for help, see, it, turn it on its head. Don't think about asking for help. Just think that you're actually enabling, enabling somebody else to feel good about helping you. <laughs> and when mm -hmm. you start thinking about it like that, it makes asking for help a whole lot easier because you know the person that's going to be helping you will actually get a buzz out of helping you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we've, we've got a lot of stuff in there, which is really, really great. Um, I've, I just want to ask you a little bit about your actual business. So, you know, tell us a little bit about what your business does and what kind of people you work with and, and what you enjoy, because you obviously enjoy helping people as well. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so we are a financial planning and wealth management firm. So we help our clients and we have clients from all walks of life. Um, we have business owner clients as well, who we work with to integrate their financial and business planning together. Yep. And so we help them plan, we help manage assets, and then we also have some consulting services and insurance where there is a need. Mm -hmm. But basically we help our clients with how do we, how do they steward their financial assets and really um, enhance their financial well-being. So money is a tool, you know, to really use for the life that you want to build for yourself. So our job is to partner with our clients, educate them, and then help them navigate this financial journey. Mm-hmm. That's also and, and the ideal client for you, what do they look like? So our ideal clients, um, they typically have, I would say, you know, we really don't have a specific. So ideal clients are people who want to start planning their financial futures and really want the education and the advice. And they want to work in partnership with somebody rather than sort of just doing it on their own. Yeah? Correct. Yes. That is awesome. Okay. So if people want to get in contact with you, either because they would love to, you know, have to get some wealth advice or um, perhaps ask a little bit more about your journey, how would they get in contact with you, Monica? So the best place would be our website and that's www.asset-preservation.com. So on there, there's a contact us. So I would recommend starting there. 
That is fantastic. Hey, look, you have been really open and honest about your journey, and I think that it is a journey that I suspect a lot of people actually go through. So I want to thank you so much for, for you know, being very open and honest with, with how that's worked for you. Um, I want to congratulate you, not only on creating you know, a much more um, efficient and, and beautiful business that you're enjoying, but also for your 10 years of marriage and the fact you've now got a, a, a life plan with your partner as well. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, just congratulations on, yeah, on, on really starting to live the EOS life, which is, you know, planning your life before somebody else does, doing what you love with people you love, making a huge difference in the world, being compensated appropriately, and of course, having time to pursue other passions. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a great way of life, and, and I want to, yeah, I want to say well done on, on achieving that, and thank you for your sharing. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, my absolute pleasure.